Thank you very much for your talk about Uruguay. It was very interesting. Um, and as the Vice Minister of Tourism in Uruguay, how do you find the balance between cultural protectionism, uh, the protection of some wonderful uh, world heritage sites and also some very old traditions, how do you find the balance with that and also cultural innovation, innov investing in cultural innovation? Okay. Uh, thank you for the chance to speak about certain issues of the, how it's going on in Uruguay, certain aspects of the tourism. Definitely, we have certain heritage that we have to renew and to put in value at the same time that can be used by the people because it's not a thing that can be intouchable. No, no reason for that, right? Then, for instance, uh, Colonia del Sacramento, 20 years ago, has been declared by UNESCO uh, heritage and then we organize a plan on how to manage such place in order to have tourism, to have Uruguayan people living there, and at the same time to protect the way of the reason why it was approved as a heritage. The same happened now with uh, Frigorifico Anglo, that is uh, one of the most important example of um, production of food during the past century, and then has been declared in last July uh, as a patrimony, industrial patrimony of the uh, humanity. And then we start to, to make certain measures to develop uh, the manager of such place, using for certain perspective that normally uh, is necessary now, like for instance, uh, uh, classrooms for a student that can see and to develop what's going on there, as well as to uh, establish certain kind of uh, interpretation places that can be used also for tourism. And uh, in other area like Geoparque that we have in the center of the, the country, also we procedure with all the stakeholders uh, trying to make the best to produce new issues that can be keep the heritage and at the same time to develop and innovate. Thank you very much. Your Vice Minister, thank you for your information and for your presentation. Was I think that was very wonderful to see how Uruguay is doing so well, mainly in South America. I say that because I'm Brasilia. And it's very good to see one country in our region showing the world uh, good uh, income and good stability, political stability, and also transparency in the government. And my question is, uh, how the Minister of Tourism is working with Uruguayan companies to add value to uh, Uruguayan brands. Because when we think about the country, Uruguay, we have a very good image, but we don't know a, a lot about Uruguayan products, the, the, if they are good or, or if they are not so good as it seems. So are you working together with the private companies as well? Um, we are trying to do it. It's not easy sometimes because uh, uh, the private sector has their own approach to, to different issues and the country sometimes is trying to help but it's no easy. Uh, Uruguay Natural is our national brand and now we are trying together with uh, the private sector to develop certain issues uh, internationally, for instance in, on the meat production as well as the wine, olive, that is quite new in my country and also to inform the people that Uruguay is the one of the only, the few that in the occidental hemisphere produce caviar. Yeah? And then all these things is a long process. It, it, this cannot be changed dramatically from one year to another one. It's uh, a period of 10 years or 20 years and also to continue with a certain message that has to be spread and to put uh, also money behind this message because it, nobody knows if you don't take certain uh, uh, measures uh, for that. And um, at the moment, we have 
also certain special opportunities, certain uh, issues that uh, also help us to be present internationally. For instance, we have now the, what is called Plan Seival. Plan Seival means that every children in the public school has their own personal computer. This process started six years ago. Now we distribute more or less one million personal computers. And this process is changing dramatically what is going on in the education. But then, this, that the original uh, process has been launched by Nicolás Negroponte, that is a program, one laptop per child. Uruguay is the only one that fulfills completely. Then, when the, is the people is thinking how to develop process of uh, e-learning or to how to transmit uh, knowledge through the new technology, you have the people say, okay, go to Uruguay and see directly. It's no question of uh, consultant, right? Or the different, uh, act, um, let us say, opinions. You can see directly. Also with the question of security, security in the food, uh, the process of traceability that we have with the cows in Uruguay is quite strong. And you cannot uh, make anything if it's not registered. And this is in a process of security and healthy of the foods is one really uh, the, the people, our brand is quite strong. But happened with the question of, uh, um, uh, let us say, uh, uh, the people from um, friendly people and the guys sector, that also Uruguay has taken measures in order to legalize uh, the, the married among the people of the same sex, for instance. Or what is dis under discussion now is the cannabis. No? Uruguay is approving a law where it will produce, commercialize, and distribute the cannabis under certain regulation. Okay, this is a thing that internationally is well known, and uh, for us it's important to, to develop in a correct way because something with the drug has to be done. And these are things that take time, and this is what we are trying to do, uh, sustainable, in the process and to have the chance to transmit like we are doing here or in United Nations where for these two years Uruguay is a member of the Security Council. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, my question is because I'm Argentine. Um, I want to know how Uruguay manages to differentiate itself from Argentina because it's so similar culturally from Dulce de Leche, the tango, gaucho culture. How does Uruguay manage to um, compete in the international markets? It's not a question of competition, frankly. I, my father was Argentinian and my mother too. And I was <laughs> born in Uruguay in 1949. And we are practically the same people, right? And uh, from that point of view, we consider that Uruguay is part of the region. And we also cooperate with the Argentinian in several issues. And we try to learn from the Argentina several issues. Uh, but we have the, our own tradition, our own ideas, and sometimes we develop quality more than quantity. And this, uh, from in the production, from is quite clear that, that we don't have the chance to compete for quantity. We can compete for quality. For instance, now Argentina produces olive. Uruguay start to produce. Okay. The amount of olive that we can produce is different like the Argentinian. Then we have to try to have the best quality as, as possible. It's in the meat, for instance. With Europe, United States and Uruguay are the only country from America that has a right to negotiate under the law 481, now 482. Uh, and this means that we have the chance to compete directly with enterprises over the Hilton quote. And then this is what trying to do, I express on the tango, we con don't compete, it's not a competition, it's how to cooperate too. On behalf of the ISD master students, I would like to thank you for your time and for your patience with us to answering so well all the questions. And I wish you a good afternoon. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs>